It's that time of year again. Meteorologists expect La Nina to set in in just a few weeks and possibly bring us a bitterly cold and chaotic winter. But what exactly is El Nino's cold sister all about? How does this regular anomaly develop? And what effects should we prepare for in the future? Well, one thing is already clear. Although El Nino and La Nina are generally considered the big players of global weather, we should not forget that the polar vortex also has a significant influence on the goings-on on our doorstep. And indeed, the special interaction of the polar vortex and La Nina could this time ensure that we are in for a winter that is very different from the ones that have gone before. Droughts, severe flooding, and sudden temperature fluctuations. Unfortunately, we have now arrived at a time when such extreme weather events are becoming more frequent with an unpleasant degree of certainty. And, according to experts, they are also becoming more and more likely. Researchers don't need to look far for the reason for this unwelcome development. Climate change has already increased average annual temperatures worldwide by one degree between 1881 and 2019. In this country, the increase over the same period is as much as 1.6 degrees, and the 10 warmest years since regular weather records began have been measured since 2010. But even the outlook for the future cannot be described as particularly rosy in view of the experts' forecasts, because even if we succeed in immediately halting the heating of the greenhouse earth, certain climate-related changes can no longer be averted. In Germany, the associated increase in extreme weather events is particularly linked to the risk of storms, extreme heat, heavy precipitation, and thus flooding. We only have to think back to the 100-year flood of 2021, which claimed the lives of a total of 180 people, 135 of them, in the R Valley alone, and caused billions of dollars in damage. In the same breath, however, the disrupted climate during the winter also causes sudden temperature drops that are as unexpected as they are sudden. Although we have mostly searched in vain for a winter wonderland covered in snow and ice in recent years, the United States was confronted with an exceptionally cold spell in December 2022 that claimed at least 63 lives. In February 2021, the situation in Texas had been even more dramatic. The lowest temperatures in 30 years had claimed 250 lives, and despite steadily rising average temperatures, Meteorologists point out that such events are not isolated cases. Quite the opposite, according to the National Center for Environmental Information, the frequency of extreme snowstorms has increased in two-thirds of the eastern United States. Of course, the data in question relates specifically to the United States, and yet researchers emphasize that comparable developments can be observed in other parts of the world. But why is that so? What are the reasons for this apparent climatic contradiction? How can a planet that is actually getting warmer and warmer experience dramatic cold spells and sudden ice storms at the same time? How El Nino, La Nina, and the Polar Vortex influence the weather? Well, the answer to this question is complicated, to say the least. But just recently, atmospheric physicists announced that they had tracked down the real culprits behind the often contradictory weather phenomena. According to them, the interaction of the polar vortex, El Nino and La Nina, seems to be responsible for the extreme events of the past. Before we go into more detail about the developments that could result for us in the future, we should first clarify what is actually meant by this trio. Experts use the term polar vortex to describe the low-pressure vortices that exist at high altitudes above the North and South Poles. These regularly intensify during the respective winter, which is not surprising since the lack of sunlight means that the atmosphere cannot warm up during this time. As a result, cold air accumulates and the westerly wind regimes associated with the polar vortices intensify. Normally, the winter polar vortices are very stable over the poles, but if the polar vortex weakens, for example due to a strong warming of the stratosphere or splits, the current in the vortex weakens and thus ultimately becomes unstable. As a result, trough-like bulges can eventually develop, which can lead to a polar outbreak, or in other words, an advance of extremely cold air masses. When it comes to El Nino and La Nina, however, we have, to put it casually, a hot brother and a cold sister. And, 
To put it in a technically correct way, two circulation anomalies. To understand the effects caused by these anomalies, however, we should first consider the normal state of affairs. In principle, the circulation of the ocean and atmosphere in the tropics always takes place in a similar way. Since the sun's rays hit the Earth more vertically around the equator, the air masses there warm up particularly quickly. They rise and move towards the poles, where they sink above the tropics and then flow back to the equator. However, since the Earth also rotates on its own axis, the resulting Coriolis force deflects the air masses westwards as they flow. All these factors mean that the water of the Pacific off the Peruvian coast is normally around 10 degrees colder than in Indonesia. The trade winds blow from South America in the east to Asia and Oceania in the west, where heavy precipitation and a sea level up to 60 centimeters higher occur. But when El Nino comes on the scene, which is the case on average about every four years, the weather is literally turned upside down. First, the Pacific in Asia and Oceania cools down, while temperatures in South America continue to climb. As a result, the atmospheric pressure pattern is also reversed. The wind weakens or ultimately even reverses completely. From now on, it will blow from the west to the east, and as soon as El Nino has weakened after a few months, La Nina usually follows after a short phase of equilibrium. This phase generally has the characteristics of the normal state, but it dramatically intensifies them. In other words, the Pacific Ocean in Asia and Oceania is now particularly warm, while the large air pressure difference between west and east further fuels the trade winds. And while El Nino and La Nina, together with normal weather conditions, form the overarching Enzo Oscillation, it's obvious that they are accompanied by certain, sometimes extreme, effects. In El Nino years, southern Africa is threatened by droughts, while the risk of heavy rainfall and flooding increases in the east of the continent. On the other side of the world, in Australia and Indonesia, people are confronted with dry periods and fires, while in Peru and Ecuador, the risk of rain, flooding, and landslides is growing. La Nina, on the other hand, usually brings cooler and wetter weather, which is why it's sometimes even seen as a positive phenomenon in southern Africa, Southeast Asia, and Australia. But it's also true that La Nina is associated with significantly colder winters in Western Canada, Northern United States, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula, and repeatedly causes extreme weather events. These include, in particular, the increase in hurricanes along the Atlantic coast of the United States. But what about here in Switzerland? Will La Nina and the polar vortex bring us a winter of chaos? Well, from a purely meteorological point of view, we in Germany hardly notice the effects of El Nino and La Nina, and yet we do feel them. On the one hand, governments in the Northern Hemisphere adjust their plans and spending to support affected countries. And on the other hand, in times of globalization, practically no country stands alone anyway. If El Nino causes a collapse in the fishing industry in Peru or the drying up of soybean fields in Brazil, this will inevitably lead to tight supply in the markets. But aside from that, a special circumstance could now also lead to the coming winter being anything but normal in our latitudes. In principle, the experts' forecasts indicate that there is a 71% probability of a La Nina event occurring this winter, which could last until March. However, as mentioned earlier, there is also the polar vortex, and since it's currently pushing cold air from the Arctic towards Europe, it could, in conjunction with La Nina, cause significantly cooler temperatures worldwide. In fact, meteorologists are even saying that the current weather situation is more unstable than it has ever been. But what exactly does that mean? Is the bitterly cold, chaos winter that is being proclaimed in many headlines these days soon going to become a frosty reality? Well, we simply don't know at this point. Because the leading weather models, ECM, WF, and GFS, are making completely contradictory predictions in this regard. The European Center for Medium-Range Weather Forecasts predicts at least some snow and cold spells. But the GraphCast Global Forecast System, on the other hand, concludes that we could even be in for the warmest winter since weather records began. However, what both models agree on is the fact that we should prepare for severe weather changes. 
We could experience extreme temperature fluctuations, and if the polar vortex collapses completely, freezing temperatures and heavy winter weather are also possible in Germany. However, it usually takes until the end of the cold season to see whether this will actually happen, so snow fans will have to be patient before they get their money's worth. Fortunately, by clicking on the subscribe button, you won't have to pay anything. So just click on subscribe and you'll never have to miss a video from us again. We'll see you soon.